run a herd of about 50,000 head of cattle. Our feedlot business is a 10,000 head yard, which feeds uh, cattle off our own production and, and also for custom clients. Bryce Cam runs his family's cattle property in Queensland's Darling Downs. Around some 80% of Australian beef is exported and the remainder ends up here in the domestic market. The great thing about Australian grain-fed beef is its um, consistency of product and, and the high quality nature and that's why it's in such demand here domestically and around the globe. This is the only part of Bryce Cam's business where antibiotics are used to treat disease among cattle in the feedlot. We'll use antibiotics when we have a beast with an ailment. Uh, might have had a cut or an abrasion, uh, or it might have, um, you know, a respiratory or a, something like we would call the flu in humans. Bryce Cam says he tries to limit antibiotic use. The Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority said it restricted the usage of some antibiotics after a review in 2018. While it's responsible for approving antibiotics, it says state and territory regulators monitor their use. Before we can use an antibiotic on any animal, it, it has to be authorised or signed off by a veterinarian. Uh, so it, Australia has some of the lowest usage of antibiotics uh, in the world. A new study, commissioned by animal rights not-for-profit, World Animal Protection, raises fresh questions about antibiotic resistance in the food chain. Researchers at Melbourne's Monash University tested foods that Australians eat every day and made findings which could have profound implications for human health. Tell me what you did in this study. So what we did was basically look at the levels of antimicrobial resistance in packaged uh, beef and salmon samples from um, Australian supermarkets. The researchers looked at how well antibiotics worked against bacteria in salmon and beef, and also searched for what antibiotic resistant genes the microorganisms might be harboring. This is significant because these genes can jump between bacteria and from them to us. So we're looking at a panel of um, 96 different genes and um, in this machine, um, it basically allows the levels of those genes in the meat samples to be quantified. So the theory would be we eat the genes yeah. and the genes mix with our microbiome, the bugs in our bowel, and we have bugs in our bowel that are antibiotic resistant? Um, uh, theoretically, that could be a route. Alternatively, you would also have these genes potentially passing into wastewater, for instance, and then also causing um, environmental contamination. 55% of the beef samples and 39% of the salmon were found to be harboring resistance to a range of commonly used antibiotics. A spokesperson for the Department of Agriculture said the study's findings are not reflective of antibiotic use in the country's beef and salmon industries. It said several antimicrobials identified in the study are not used by Australia's salmon sector. We can't really conclude exactly how the antimicrobial resistance in these meats uh, was, was acquired. Um, what's clear is because of the very high levels of antimicrobial resistance, they were probably exposed to antibiotics at some point, but we can't determine uh, in what context and for what purpose. So were you surprised at that level? It sounds a lot. Um, yes, um, it, it's, it's a concern. Um, it, it, the levels of antimicrobial resistance in these meats was much, much more than we were expecting. Now it's possible that cooking the meat reduces the risk of transmission, but there could still be huge implications for human health due to rising antibiotic resistance in the food chain. Are we monitoring enough for this? Um, no, absolutely not. So um, what Australia desperately needs is basically an integrated surveillance system for both antimicrobial usage as well as antimicrobial resistance levels. So we also need to be looking at animal health, we need to be looking at food, we need to be looking at the environment. This is a global problem that could make infections much harder to treat. Antibiotic resistance is where antibiotics no longer work because the bacteria produce chemicals that inactivate the antibiotic. 
And that's a real problem. There's people already dying around the world because they're getting infections that we can no longer treat. Phenomenon called antibiotic resistance. And as the projections go for the future, they're talking about millions of extra people dying per year because antibiotics don't work. Coles, Woolworths and Aldi all declined to be interviewed. Food Standards Australia New Zealand said it would be monitoring antibiotic resistance from June of this year as part of a new study looking at antibiotic resistance in Australian food. It just shows wherever you look, the resistance and the resistance genes are there. So why we have to be very careful with the volumes of antibiotics we allowed to be used, the types that are used and how we let it spread. And if we don't have transparency of what's happening with real time or near real time data, then it's very hard to police this and make sure that things aren't happening. Treating animal diseases is one thing, but antibiotics have long been used to boost animal growth. Bryce Cam is well aware that antibiotic resistance is a serious issue, and he's working hard to avoid making the problem worse. The use of antibiotics for growth promotion under our stewardship guidelines is a really regulated sector. Antimicrobial resistance and the management of antibiotics, both in human health and animal health, is an emerging issue globally. Uh, something that the beef industry and this industry, uh, you know, it takes very seriously. The Australian Pesticides and Veterinary Medicines Authority told 730 it generally won't approve antibiotics for growth promotion in cattle. Bryce Camp says more work has been done to understand the impact of antibiotic use in feedlot operations such as this. Our industry takes the matter very seriously because we understand how crucial it is to maintain the e efficacy of those um, important medicines that we have today. Uh, we're very always conscious of emerging issues um, for consumers and, um, and ensuring that we're delivering a, a safe and nutritious product uh, onto the plate. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.